Hello crafty friends, welcome to video five in our white paper scrap series. I've got a real hodgepodge of paper scraps here, different sizes, some square, some rectangular. Again, I'm just going to tape them together on the back so that I can treat them as if they were one piece of paper. So to decorate this jigsaw of papers, I'm going to use a luscious powder. So I'm going to put a little bit, that's probably far too much, on my glass mat in three colours. I've got raspberry jam, crushed velvet, and warm wishes. And to each pile of powder, I'm going to add some of this Ranger texture paste in transparent glass. And I'm going to use it like a paint. So I'm just going to get the, the texture paste and mix it with the powder. And when this paste dries, it dries clear. So you should just see the pigment and the mica shining through. So I'm just going to brush it on. Right, I think that'll do for the raspberry jam for the moment. And now I'm going to do the purple, the crushed velvet. Okay, and now for the gold. Right, that's done and I'm going to leave that to dry before I do anything else to it. So this is nice and dry now. It did curl quite a bit while it was drying, but yesterday I popped it underneath my glass mat and it flattened out pretty nicely. And what I want to do with this is die cut out lots of leafy branchy shapes to make some shimmery, shiny, leafy branchy shapes. So I'm going to do that using my electronic die cutting machine because it just gives me the most space for something like this. I'm going to keep it stuck together but trim off the end because I don't need that bit. So I can always cut some other bits from that in a minute, maybe using my little die cutting machine. And because it's a patchwork, I'm going to get my dies and place them on it like this so I can make sure I don't crisscross over the lines and end up with half a die cut and I'll just get as many leafy branchy dies on here as I possibly can. I'm also including a few flowery dies as well. When doing something like this you don't want to put your dies too close together Although well, it's probably okay in an electronic die cutting machine because you get a bit more pressure. But different die companies make their dies a different thickness. So they all require a little bit of different pressure to go through. And if you put a thick one next to a thin one, then one of them won't cut properly. I hope you see what I mean. So that I don't have to disturb these, I'm going to make my sandwich the other way up to normal. I've got a clear cutting plate, the metal cutting plate like that just make sure these are separated and now for the magnetic shim and now for the plastic shim and now the other cutting plate and I'm going to run that through my Gemini so it looks like everything cut and everything stayed where it should so I'll just take a few minutes to take all these out and remove them from their dies and poke out all the little bits that need to be poked out and then I'll come back to you. So here we have a really pretty selection of shimmery, shiny, leafy floral bits. I've also got this left over so I can cut some more if I want to but I could also cut some little circles to use as embellishments or little flowers so we'll keep that over there and this is something you can do let's say when 
you're not inspired necessarily to make a card or you just want to boost your stock of die cuts, you can get your white paper scraps, treat them very simply with some kind of colour and then once it's dry, just go for it and die cut loads and loads and loads of little things out and then you can keep these in a pocket or an envelope for when you want to make a card at a later date. Right, as I have done during the previous videos in this series, I'm going to make one card for you on camera and then make a bunch of other cards off camera and come back at the end of the video to show you how they all turned out. But for the one I'm going to make on camera, I'm going to use this really pretty branch and leaves. So I want to keep this card really clean and simple. I want the only colour to come from the leafy branchy bit. So I'm going to cut some frames out of smooth white cardstock and I've actually sacrificed a card blank to get this smooth white cardstock because I want the frames that I cut to match the card front. So I've got a rectangle stitched frame and now I'm going to cut some whimsical circles to act as a frame and I'm again using white paper scraps the shims to make sure I get a really good cut. So I think I want the circles in the background. Not sure if I want all three, but we'll put all three down for now. And then the frame may be slightly offset. Not sure about that yet. And then that's sitting on top of there somewhere. And I'm going to turn this into a get well soon card and put my sentiment in the middle about there. So I'll do that before I stick anything down. And as this is a silicone stamp, I'm going to use Stazon because it's the best ink I have for silicone stamps. Well, best black ink I have. So that's stamped really well. I'm just going to use my dedicated sponge dauber, dedicated to glue, to sponge some glue on the back of my circle here and I'm going to use non-stick paper, non-stick deli paper to press it down. And now for the frame, I think I will centralise this. I don't think I'll offset this one. I might do that in some of the other cards that I make. Just lay the little leafy thing over all the frames like that I think. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to add some Morning Dew Nouveau Drops to the little circles on my circle wreath frame thing just for a bit of dimension and a bit of interest. And that's this card finished. It's nice and clean and simple and you've got that lovely pop of shimmery glossy colour on the leaf and some gloss on the dots and a sentiment that is not too in your face. So I'm going to toddle off now and make some more cards and be back in a second or two with the results. I'm back and I've made seven more cards for you I think. This is the one I made on camera and the Nouveau drops have dried now and gone nice and clear so it's got a nice little bit of uh, dimension and gloss there. For the rest of the cards that I created, I used this stamp set. It's similar-ish to the Get Well Soon stamp that I used on the other card, but as I didn't have any other stamps in that style, I decided to use these. And I'll start by showing you my two least favourite of the cards that I made. So I've done one portrait, one landscape, and I put, instead of the words in the middle, I put them in the corner, which I like. So I've got just a note and thank you. The reason I don't like this one is because I used this lovely heart frame die cut, which looked great. And then I put my dream catcher die cut on top of it, which in my head seemed like a good idea, but it actually just created this kind of mess behind it. You can't really make out what you're looking at. So I think it would have been better if I just used these two leaves on top of the hearts rather than adding this die cut or I could have maybe added a solid circle 
to give them something definitive to sit on but hey ho I added some Nuvo drops the morning dew Nuvo drops just scattered them around for a bit of extra gloss and dimension and then I also added some circles that I cut from the leftover bits of luscious powdered paper so yeah I think next time if I was to do this I would omit that dream catcher circle this one I just don't think this die cut here has enough impact on its own I perhaps should have added a second one and this one's pretty much similar to this one in construction but I did put morning dew nouveau drops on the luscious powder circles so they will eventually dry clear and have a bit of glossy dimension to them but I do like the heart and the postage stamp in the background it's just this die cut on its own is a bit flat I think right onto the cards that I do like this one obviously landscape I put the sentiment down here in this corner and then I've got a net die underneath a square stitched frame die and a fern die cut on top I didn't add any of the luscious powder circles I didn't feel it needed it but I did add some of the nouveau drops and I really like this one I love this square kind of net die underneath the square frame another one that I liked portrait again with the sentiment in the lower right hand corner and we've got a bit of a diagonal going on here which I enjoy I used a large postage stamp so not a frame just a solid stamp in the background with a circular frame on top and then these two different style leaves but I think they work together and again I felt there was enough of the luscious powder paper there so I only added morning dew nouveau drops another portrait one this time the diagonal is going in this direction although the leaf is going in that direction so you get a nice crisscross I've got a smaller postage stamp here and two coffee ring die cuts I also added the luscious powder circles but I didn't add any nouveau drops to them so they're flat just like the leaf maybe actually I could add some crystal glaze or glossy accents on top of this die cut I think it's not too fiddly and when that dries that would give a nice bit of dimension as well and you still get all the sparkle and shine from the luscious powders shining through maybe I'll try that later and I think these two here are my favourites. I've got a Polaroid style frame and a film strip negative style frame there with one of my favourite leafy branchy things on top. I added luscious powder circles and nouveau drops and I've got that diagonal going on there with this. And I think this leafy die cut is a lot of fun and that goes quite nicely with a birthday sentiment. And then here, very simply, I took an outline scribbly heart die cut, added that to the left, and then a circle frame to the right. And then I put the leafy die cut in the middle over the two, added the little circles, added the drops, and just a simple small sentiment underneath. And there we have another eight cards made using white paper scraps. I know I said that on the original one, I cut my frames from another card blank but you can use white paper scraps if you've got good matches because not all white papers are created equally some are whiter than others some are slightly creamier than others so just match your white paper scraps to your card blanks as best you can so it's another way of using white paper scraps just to have them as foundational elements in the background of your focal spot right that's it only one more day to go in this series so i do hope you join me tomorrow for the last day in our white paper scraps video series if you want to watch the series from start to finish i will link a playlist in the video description you can just click play on the first video in that playlist and you'll get all the white paper scraps videos that I've ever made because there are a few more than just this series right enough waffling from me I will see you very soon thanks for watching bye for now